there guys welcome back to another microsoft fleximator tutorial but as you can see today we are not into the fleximator environment in the sdk but we are in blender blender is the program the software we can use to build 3d objects it's a very powerful software you can use to build the 3d objects uh, uh, to make movies to make animations to make rendering uh, a lot of stuffs so download blender from the link in the description below which is the official site of course and you also need to download the blender to ms msfs toolkit which we can use to convert the objects created in blender uh, to the standard format for Microsoft Flight Simulator and you can download that uh, direct from the uh, GitHub from the site which is linked in the des description below you could go to the releases and uh, download the zip files everywhere on your computer and when you're done back in Blender uh, go to edit preferences and click install locate your zip files and uh, once you're done Click install and your, your MFS toolkit should be right there. Make sure you have the checkbox checked so the radon will be active. Okay, let's explore the software. This is the main viewport display of Blender. And this one is a 3D viewport display. And this is the default scene in Blender where we have an object, this cube, this thing, which is a camera, and another thing which is a light, as you can see, in the scene collection, in this uh, viewport here, we can see the name of the various object. Uh, of course, to create object for the Microsoft Flight Simulator, we don't need the camera, so we're gonna delete that, and uh, we're gonna delete the light, because by, by now we don't need that. And we are with uh, our standard cube. Up to Moving Blender, we have uh, different comments, and the first comment you want is uh, to know how to navigate the viewport display and uh, with your mouse if you hold down the middle button you can pan the scene while dragging and if you release of course the movement will stop with the left mouse button we can select objects like in most software and this is uh, with blender 2.0 2.8 it comes with Blender 2.8 and with the right mouse button we can have a context menu uh, to move things to move objects this is an object a cube you can see that it should select the cube and uh, in this panel we have uh, move rotate and scale so if we want to move you can click on move and a little gizmo appears so dragging on the arrow keys we can move the cube in whatever direction we want let's bring back the cube and in the same way we can rotate the cube and uh, if you remember this is the same thing we see in the SDK so if we now rotate along the Z axis the vertical axis it's the blue one and uh, X axis is the red one and the green one is the y axis so let's bring back here with ctrl z of course you undo movements if you want to zoom in with a mouse wheel you can zoom in and if you want to scale your object you can press scale select your object and scale it along various directions and uh, we're back to the default cube here we are uh, as you can see, once we hold our mouse on the various icons, we can see there's, of course, a shortcut to do things. They will uh, become really handy in the future. Okay, back to our cube. So if you want to, uh, and back to object select, if you want to move, you can press G and you can move wherever you want. And once you're done, if you click, the cube will stay in the place where you've moved it. Ctrl Z to move it to its uh, original location. The scale is S to scale, rotate is R to rotate. Uh, you can of course move in only one direction by pressing G and the direction you want to move. So if you want to bring the cube up, let's press G, Z, and as you can see, by moving the mouse, 
it will be moving only on the z direction and if you want to scale it in the x direction we can press scale x scale x and we scale and scale y and we scale okay this is and another thing you would like to set up before starting uh, creating our 3D object is uh, the statistics here um, indicating how many faces and vertex and uh, triangles as uh, our mesh because uh, performance is really important in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we need to always look at how much uh, geometry we are adding into the system. So go to Edit Preferences and the interface, uh, you can go to the status bar and click scene statistics. So as you can see, if I now untoggle it, it uh, will disappear and back we have our statistic. So the goal today is uh, to make a runway cone. Now what is a runway cone? So let's Google it. And are those uh, runway delimiters? As you can see, they are cones. And uh, in fact, our runway, in the airport that we are creating is full of these cones. Uh, we have uh, red cones and uh, white cones. So uh, our our cones have a base, a square base, and uh, the cone itself on top. And the idea in Blender is to decompose uh, the object we want to create in uh, simple shapes. In fact, uh, we have right now a cube which is a mesh. Uh, let's uh, start uh, modeling. So we need to scale this cube to the exact measurement of our cone. And we can see the measurement of the, of the object by pressing the N key. Uh, this is the transform panel. And as you can see, our object in its dimensions is two meters by two meters by two meters, which is the default cube. So um, the base of our uh, cone will be probably 0 0.40 by 0 0.40 by uh, 0.05. Uh, we can zoom in and if we rotate, we can see that our uh, object is not more in the middle, so we can Select the object by pressing G and GY to put it right in the middle. And as you can see, uh, it's right into the center of our screen. But we have um, changed its dimension and we have changed them by scaling the object. And in fact, the scale is now 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 0 0.25. Uh, Microsoft Flex Simulator doesn't like at all scaling you want the scale to be one. So every time you scale an, um, a mesh in object mode, which is the mode that we are using now, uh, you should apply the scale. And the scale is applied by pressing Ctrl A and apply scale. And we want normally we want to apply all transform. So the scale is one and the location will be zero. This is the, um, the orange point. The orange point is the um, origin of our mesh. And this uh, circle here is called the 3D cursor. So we have uh, our, our base for our cone. And uh, let's go to um, a perspective of a front view. Uh, you can use uh, the num numpad if you have uh, um, a complete keyboard. So Control 3 will bring you to the um, to this view, which is the right right view. Uh, the front view is uh, maybe this is the back. If we click again, we get to the front, of course. Uh, the front is uh, Ctrl 1. Uh, so as you can see, our object is uh, right um, in, the, in the middle of our scene, and a part of our object will be underground if we leave this like this. So we should move a little bit up. So GZ and or GZ, if you are in another place on the planet, uh, we should put it just above the ground. Um, its, uh, it's location is changed, so uh, Control A and apply all transform. Uh, you got it, so you can close this panel by pressing the N key. And we have uh, the base of uh, our cone, and uh, we should add another which is the, the cone itself. So let's add. Okay, so let's add a cylinder 
and press add mesh cylinder okay the cylinder is being added uh, right where the 3d cursor this is the name of this object is and uh, when you add the uh, cylinder we can see we have a context menu here and it's only available once the cylinder is created if we do stuff like moving or modifying the cylinder we don't have this menu anymore uh, so we can um, adjust its radius which will be 0 0.15 and its depth which is the height um, 0 0.40 and the number of vertices which is the number of sides of the cylinder uh, now is 32 but uh, it's really too complex for a, an object uh, this small so we can use maybe 20 okay i think 20 is okay so we have to put this baby into the middle of uh, our um, of our square of our cube to the base so go back to the front view and press gz to bring it up and gy to bring it in the middle right in the middle so on top view gx and now as the baby is right in the middle uh, so let's confirm this all transform so it's on zero 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 and scale one uh, of course it's it looks like it is uh, a little bit too high so we can start modifying this baby by changing from the object mode to the edit mode and as you can see uh, we are now seeing vertices which are the little orange dots and we are now seeing edges which are the straight lines and we are seeing faces we have three modes this is vertex selection we can switch to edge selection where we can select only the edges or we can switch to face mode selection and this is where we can select the faces of our object so if the cone um, the, the top part of the cone should be smaller than the bottom part of the cone so we can use the uh, vertex, modes, vertex mode and box select a bunch of vertices uh, so if, if we click S to scale them and move the mouse we can see that some vertices are not scaled which is the the, the viewport shading uh, only the um, the visible vertex the visible faces the visible element of our mesh could be selected so if we want to select uh, also the mesh the the part that we are not seeing we should enable this baby here which is x-ray so if you can if we box select again you can see that we have selected also the vertices that were on the other part so let's scale it like this uh, we have our cone it's a bit a little to hide in fact if we can see if you can see here our cones are smaller so let's go back and press gz and our cone should be pretty much like that and the base is is to height uh, so we can uh, press tab to go to switch to edit mode between object and edit mode and take the bottom vertices and press gz to bring this yeah so uh, the cone is uh, is not uh, sitting on the, its base so gz to bring it here and all these guys back on the ground and all transform uh, if we want to select all objects we can press the a key and as you can see we have select all so the cone is pretty much ready Jeez. okay it's um it's a little bit too sharp this um, the space i think so we can um, maybe add uh, a little bit of a bevel to our object so go into edit mode and select um, all the all the vertex and add a bevel so we can drag a little bit and as you can see we are now creating a bevel edge and there is another tool once you while you bevel if you scroll the wheel you will add as you can see um, some other loops to make our object more 
more smooth. Uh, another important function in Blender is to smooth the faces. Uh, you can obtain this by clicking the right mouse button and click Shade Smooth. Um, on both objects, we have Shade Smooth. So, uh, right now we have in, we are in the viewport shading uh, mode. If you click on the material preview, we can see that our object by now is white. White because uh, there is actually no material applied to the um, to the object. Materials are what makes our object colorful, um, maybe rough or metallic, and the material you can set them. Uh, in the O shading tab or by clicking right here in the material. As you can see, we have no material and I'm gonna add a new material that will be cone white. So let's give it a name. Uh, we can, of course, uh, rename the, our mesh by double clicking on them. So this is the cone and this is the base. So if we scroll down into the material um, properties, you can see we have base color, we have metallic, we have specular, uh, roughness, and if you scroll down right here, once you have installed the MFS Blender 2 MFS uh, toolkit, you will get this menu, so menu, uh, which is a MFS material parameters. So actually, the um, MFS material is, that is disabled, and we can enable it, but by putting an MFS standard material. What we have here is the place where we can define our texture for our object. So we have an albedo texture, a metallic texture, and it's called metallic, but uh, is a texture composed of occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And this is the what is called the PBR. Uh, we have a normal texture, a mystic texture, and a bunch of our of other texture. Of course, we we don't need a texture. It's not uh, it's not needed because we can change the color of the material and its properties directly in this panel. So if we want uh, a red cone, we can click on the base color and move it to the red. And as you can see, we have red here. We can of course change its darkness to make it it a little more dark and its saturation to make it a little bit more used. And we can also change its roughness. So its plastic could be little roughness to know, so it's, uh, it's shiny, uh, or could be much roughness and it's very rough, no light reflected. I can, we can leave this like this. And the specular, a little bit less, like this. It's not metallic, so no metallic needed. And metallic is set to zero. So we have our material. Uh, we're gonna call this material cone red. Because we want a red cone. And we should uh, apply this material also to the other object, the cone itself. But it's a little bit too plasticky, too flat. So to have a fantastic cone, uh, we should texture it. Uh, we're gonna pick texture from, oh, we can of course paint the texture by ourselves, or we're gonna pick texture from the internet. And uh, a very nice internet site to pick texture is uh, texture.com. So texture.com, and we have a, a search box, and we're gonna type in plastic. And we have a lot of uh, materials. So let's search something we should we can use for um, for a red cone. Uh, I think this one, the scratch plastic, is fantastic. As, and if you click, we have a preview of the material. You know, you, you can see it's uh, it's red. It's got the plastic scratches. Uh, it's nice. And if we go down, we can have the maps we need. So we have an albedo map for this material, a normal map, and a roughness map. Of course, the albedo is the color of our texture, and the roughness is how rough in every point our texture is, and the roughness is expressed like this, so more black, 
less roughness, more white, more roughness, full white, full rough, and uh, full black, full smooth. Uh, the normal texture uh, express uh, the 3D, 3D aspect. Uh, look, this is a bit scratch, so it's a, there is a little, little bit of indentation here, uh, there is some movement here and there, and um, the normal map is used to, to fake the, our, our object, the, the 3D engine of the, of the software, uh, without using any more geometry. So we can download uh, the, the mask we want, it's a tiny, tiny little bit of objects, so um, 512 by 512 texture is okay, and I have saved them, to my texture um, uh, folder where I have a bunch of textures saved from texture.com and uh, other sources. There are, of course, a lot of sources in, um, uh, on the internet. Uh, we have the albedo, the normal, and the roughness texture. So let's go back to Blender and uh, let's see how we can use them. In the albedo slot, press open and navigate to your texture folder by last modified. Uh, pick the albedo, and as you can see, our texture is now applied over our cone. Of course, there is a normal texture, and we're gonna pick it, and the normal is here. Pretty much nothing has changed, but you, with, with this type of, uh, of texture, because the scratches are a little, little faint, but you can increase the normal scale. Uh, increase the normal effect by scrolling down in the material parameters and increase the normal scale. As you, as you can see, now we have bumps, we have scratches. Okay, so when you, you apply a texture to a material, you know the texture is a flat image, but you are applying it to a 3D image, to a 3D mesh. So, how to wrap in Blender? Let's go in uh, Edit Mode by pressing the Tab key and uh, select the faces and press U to unwrap. And uh, if we go to the UV editing, we can see that now, let's go back to the viewport material display, and uh, now our cube is uh, flattened to our image. It's opened to our image. So this is the top part of the cube, this is the bottom part of the cube, and as you can see, we have all parts of the cube displayed on our texture. It's, it's nice, it's nice here, but as you can see, there are part of the texture that are not used. Um, we can um, change, of course, the, the UV editing, and now I wanna select the top and the bottom face, the top and the bottom face, and wrap them again from this view. And project from view, and as you can see, I have a square in this position. I can press A and scale our UV map. As you can see, now it's more defined. The same thing for the cube. So edit mode and A to select all. I don't really care about the top and the bottom part of the of the cylinder, but I really care about this part of the cylinder. So X-ray to select everything, and we can select the, those vertices because we are now using a only half part of the image. And by pressing GY, I'm gonna bring that to the bottom. I'm right OK with this object now and I'm ready to export into the Microsoft Flex Simulator. So I'm gonna press A and Control A to make sure I have apply on my transform. So every object is in 0, 0, 0 location and one scale, every object 0, 0, 0 location and one scale. So, of course I wanna save my work. So I press File, Save As. If you remember, we can navigate to our uh, object folder is I'll ideal in Iago. Go into package sources. We have created a model lib folder, so click on model lib, and I'm gonna create a new directory with the name of my object. So will be ideal cone red. 
And inside this, I want to put my blend file, an ideal corn rank. And now I have my blend file saved. And to export the object, you're going to press A to select everything on the scene, to select the object you want to export, so everything on the scene, basically. And place file, export, extend and GTLS for MFSS. And if you don't have this menu or you don't have the MFS material panel, you have to install again the Blender to MFS toolkit. So let's click OK, and we have a bunch of options here. We have the name of the object, and I like to call the name of the object like my Blender file and like my folder. And we have a texture folder. And the texture folder will be dot dot slash texture because I don't know if we have seen it before, but we have a texture folder in our model lib folder. Let's open MFSS and let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see. We're gonna always check generate a pan XML file because um, the Flex Motor compiler needs an XML file to uh, locate your object in your directory structure. Uh, the name will be the same of our model dot XML. And always check generate UID because the sim needs a UID to place your object. And please export extended GTLS. Okay, he has already done his job. And uh, if we navigate to the LIDL folder, Niago package services, LIDL model lib, LIDL conrad. You can see we now have um, our blend file, of course, but we also have um, conrad.gltf, uh, a con.xml contains our UID, and a bin file which contains the, the mesh itself. We are done. The object is. Um, is okay and is ready to be placed in Flex Simulator. So let's stop it and load our project into the scene. And we are back, we load up our project into the scenery editor and uh, we need to locate our new cones. And um, so let's let's try to put it the name of our cone, L I D L. And nothing here, but of course I need to press all and search for ideal there's nothing. Why? Because the sim needs to um, have uh, the objects uh, loaded in its format, which is BGL. So the objects need to be compiled before the sim can see them. And how we compile our object? Uh, you know, we in our project, we have um, the model lib already created. So if we press the build all button, and let's bring up the console to see if there are any errors. Okay, we have done. So the the sim is reading our object, is compiling. Oh, here it is, lidlconrad.gltf. So it's compiling our object and is compiling it to a uh, modelib.bgl. It's uh, reading our texture and is compiling them to the its format, which is png.dds. So we are okay. And if we now search LIDL, all packages, as you can see, our cone is ready to be added. So I'm going to press add in the scenery editor, and we have our cone here. Okay, it's a little bit tiny <laughs> compared to those cones. So we can delete those cones and pick our new cone and give it a little bit of a scale. I think it's okay. So we can duplicate it because there are three cones. Duplicate again on its size of the runway. And we're gonna remove those cones. So I don't need that anymore because now we have our personal cones and duplicate them here. Okay, so as you can see in the simulator, our cone is a little bit too shiny. We can adjust that by playing with the roughness setting, but um, 
now I want you to explain how the the PBR or Compost, compost texture occlusion roughness metallic texture works and if you remember we have downloaded also our roughness, roughness uh, map from texture.com and it's here and it's the roughness map we should open it with an image editing software i use gimp so open with gimp or you can use photoshop if you have that but gimp is a free software and it's very easy to use Okay, convert, no problem. And now we have our texture displayed in game. Uh, to create a composed texture, which has uh, the ambient occlusion, the roughness, and the metallic map, all in one texture, we should decompose this image. And you can obtain that by going to colors, components, and decompose. And okay, so as you can see, we now have uh, our red channel, green channel, and blue channel, and those are layers. If you are um, familiar with the uh, photo photo editing software, you can uh, work with layers. The top layer is above the bottom layer. So the um, the top layer is the ambient occlusion, and ambient occlusion is uh, a, a system to create uh, shadows from a flat image. The green component is the roughness and the blue component is the metallic. So the about the, the red the component, if we don't have um, an, an ambient occlusion map in our texture from texture.com or from another software, it is best to keep it full white. So make it full white and paint it full white. This one which is the roughness is okay, and more black is more shiny, uh, more white is more rough. And as you can see, the, the artist has made rough the scratches, and the other part has a little bit more shiny. And the metallic map, the blue one, should be all black, because there is no metallic and all black. While if we made it full white, it will be full metallic. So we have our texture, our layers are okay. And we go back to colors, component, and compose. Press OK, and you have, you have your uh, comp map. Really simple to do. So press File, Export, AS. I'm going to save it like the name we have used before dot comp and I have already done that so let's overwrite it and export and back in blender we can now assign those metallic which is occlusion roughness metallic to our new created folder our new created texture that is this one Okay, so I think there is too much specular here. And I think it's okay, so I can add this um, A file export, extend the GTLS, and in my object folder, yeah, go back and search this model lib texture. Now we have our compost texture ready to be used. Uh, so I think um, we have done a lot of things today. Uh, you can be satisfied. So let's go ahead by doing uh, other objects. Thank you for following me. Uh, see you in the next episode. Bye bye.